Thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, fantastic event. And I would like to share with you my story. When I started my PhD some years ago, a colleague of mine was planning to do research for a company, for Philips to be specifically. And they wanted to do market research because they had this product on the market that completely failed but all the market research beforehand indicated that it's going to be a huge success. And I asked him, how did they conduct market research? He said, well, they use surveys. I said, surveys? So yes, surveys. What we do is we ask people what they think of a product, and we take them very seriously. I said, that can't be true. I studied economics. And one of the principles of economics is that you always look at the behavior of a person and you don't listen to what they have to say. But interestingly, the standard way of doing market research is with surveys. So I thought, you know, there must be a solution to this. And I started thinking, and I started even Googling, but I found nothing. And then I had the idea of starting a new way of market research. And that new way of market research starts with this question. What is value? And how do we measure value? One of the problems when you study economics or business administration is that there is no clear definition of value. You know, people say value is just something good, something that we like, something, something vague. But in economics, Value has a very specific definition. Value is how much are you willing to pay for a product. Very specific. And the reason why we focus on value is that it gives you the true answer. It gives you what matters most. But here comes the big problem. Nowadays, the way how value is measured is through surveys. And the biggest problem of surveys is that there is a so-called hypothetical bias. That means, because it's hypothetical, it's not real, you know, when you answer a survey, you don't have an incentive to, to be honest. And this is a huge problem. Because everyone, companies, researchers, academic researchers, they, they rely on surveys. So how do we solve this issue? How, so, how do we solve this very fundamental issue? Because we are trying to measure what really what matters most, value. Talk is cheap. Everyone knows that. But still we focus on too much on what people have to say. But the way we can solve that is by focusing on the fact that actions speak louder than words. Everyone agrees on that. When you look at the actions of a person, you know that's the truth, that is the honesty. And to be able to get the honesty out of a person, you need to have skin in the game. And skin in the game means you have something to lose if you're not honest. Now we're getting closer. Put your money where your mouth is. If you say that the product is valued a certain amount, then put your money where your mouth is by voting with your wallet. This guy, William Bickery, he won a Nobel Prize for inventing a very interesting auction. It's called the Bickery Auction. And he, and he invented this auction not because he wanted to have an auction that's able to sell more. No, this auction has a very interesting property. This auction is able to give you the incentive to be completely honest about how much you value a specific product. And the way how it works, and it's very different from the auctions that you're familiar with, so it's not an eBay auction. The way it works is that as a participant, you can only place a single bid. 
and the bits are sealed. And that means when you place a bit, you cannot see the bits of others and they cannot see your bit. And here comes the tricky part. If you win that auction, you don't pay your own bit, you pay the second highest bit. Now under these rules, and that's what William Vickery proved, under these rules, you have the incentive to be completely honest about how much you're willing to pay for a product. And you might all wonder why, why is that the case? How come? Well, let me give you an intuitive explanation. This guy, Nicholas Stalov, wrote a whole book about the black swan. And the black swan is a very improbable event. And he argues that the fact that a lot of decision makers, they don't have skin in the game, it's not real, they make a lot of bad decisions. They predict things that are not there. And what he had to say about the victory auction is the following. An auction has embedded skin in the game. You risk owning what you're bidding for. And that is the interesting property, because now we're giving you an incentive to be completely honest. Now imagine if you're participating in a victory auction, and your true valuation is 200 euros. Your bid might be 100 euros. You say, well, I'm not going to be honest. I might value it for 200 euros, but I'm only going to place 100 euros as a bid. But here's the problem. Somebody else might bid 150 euros, which is higher than your bid, but below your valuation. It would have been in your best interest to simply reveal your maximum willingness to pay, because in that case, you only have to pay 150 euros. You might also reason that I'm going to place a bid that is higher than my maximum willingness to pay, because I don't have to pay my own bid. But the problem is, if you do that, you risk paying too much. So again, it is in your best interest to simply bid your maximum willingness to pay, to reveal honestly how much you value the product. Now you all might wonder, okay, this is interesting, but what can we do with this? Well, what I did is I started initially as an academic project, this auction online to measure how much people are willing to pay for it. Apparently, nobody else did that before. And suddenly, this started to work, and I started to do academic research this way. But then, I was approached by companies, and they started asking me questions, okay, this is very interesting. You have data on what people actually think about our products. We have a number of questions. We would like to know how much we can charge them, and how should we present the product. We did this experiment for Unilever, where we focused on a shampoo. And they were interested in two things. And actually, the experiment was much bigger than what I'm presenting here. But what I'm going to be focusing on two things is how much emphasis should Unilever put on the fact that this product contributes to the sustainable living plan. That's it, the sustainable living plan. It just that's what they're going to communicate to consumers. So what we did is we had one group of consumers. They placed a bid on this ad. And a second group of consumers, we added this here. We just said, this contributes to the sustainable living plan. And then we compared their, their willingness to pay. And what we found is, by simply mentioning the sustainable living plan, people were willing to pay 30% more. And this is very interesting for Unity because now they know by simply putting this on the ad, we're able to increase perceived value. On top of that, when you have the willingness to pay of a lot of people, 
we're able to measure the complete demand for, for product. You know, I think most of you have economics, and you've all seen those, you know, demand curves, but do they actually exist? Yes. With this auction, you're able to measure the exact demand curve for a product. In fact, we even have a demand curve for each proposition. And you can clearly see that the yellow one, which represents the product with a sustainable living plan, is valued more than the other one. And with this information, we can even see that 20% of the consumers is willing to pay at least 5 euros. But with these insights, you can do a lot. One thing we do is concept screening. We can easily determine which concept, products that you're planning to launch in the market, is valued most. We also focus on how should you price the product. Because we have the data, we have the demand curves. Third, proposition. How should you position the product? Because how you display the product matters a lot to how much people are willing to pay for it. And last, we collect a lot of information about the people who are participating in the auction. So we know exactly which group of consumers is willing to pay most. And you might think, you know, this is very interesting information for companies, but it seems that you're providing them information about how to charge us more. No, 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 no. The idea here is, is that when you know what consumers like, you can feedback that information to companies, and they can start producing products that you actually want to have. And that's also the vision behind Bailey's. And that's the company that I started based on this mechanism, is that with this data, companies are able to make much better decisions on which products to put on the market and how to present them. We're working for various clients like PricewaterhouseCoopers, Danone, Vodafone, and also for universities, because even academic researchers, they consider this method much better than conducting the, the usual survey method. And I, I actually hope that in the future, that I'm also are able to apply this platform to the Moroccan market, not necessarily for within the Moroccan market, but for Moroccan companies who would like to export their products abroad, because this is a major issue. How should you, people often don't know how much people are willing to pay for your product in Europe, so you don't know how much risk you can pay. And then even if you make the decision of exporting your product to Europe, you don't know how to present it, how to position it. Recently, we did for a small Moroccan startup called SugarShoe an experiment. These are a bunch, well not a bunch, it's a bunch of entrepreneurs, Moroccan entrepreneurs, who are planning to introduce a new market, a shoe brand in the European market. And they had a very simple question is that we have this design, and we have this design, but we have no idea which one is valued more. We put it in the auction, we did the auction, and we got the data. Raise your hand if you think this one is valued more than this one. Yes, by 27%. They were shocked because their favorite design was the left one. <laughs> but now you get to know honestly what consumers think about your product. And that is exactly what you need to have as an entrepreneur, as a company. Felix believes that auctions speak louder than words. And we have the vision of a world where products always are the products that consumers want to have. And that is the reason why I started this company, and I hope to grow it even bigger. Thank you for your attention.